Today, I am announcing that this office has determined that Officer Ravinsky's use of deadly force under the circumstances as they presented themselves on December 9, 2016, when he made the decision to use uh, his weapon, was justified. The responding police officers were clearly informed that they were confronting a hostile situation when dispatched. This included information that the subject, Mr. McIntosh, was intent on taking his own life and had, rely, had relayed, quote, whoever is sent will die, end of quote. When officers observer, observed Mr. McIntosh at or near the door of the shed in the backyard, Mr. McIntosh first appeared with gas cans. Shortly thereafter, he armed himself with a machete and a firearm. Although the gun in the possession of Mr. McIntosh later was determined to be a pellet gun, and despite the fact that Ms. Frasca had advised officers that he had a BB gun, responding police officers could not have been certain and could not take the chance that in fact the black handgun about to be raised and pointed in their direction was in fact not a real gun. While armed, Mr. McIntosh ignored and refused to comply with numerous police commands. These police commands were not only heard by the other police officers, but were verified by interviews with two neighbors who reside next door and who indicated that they too heard the officers giving the subject verbal commands of drop it, drop it on more than one time. Not only was Mr. McIntosh armed, but he began to run towards police officers. Mr. McIntosh was a 35 year old male, 6'1 and weighed approximately 320 pounds. At the time that these events unfolded, the police officers had knowledge that this defendant may have been under the influence of drugs, either prescription or otherwise, in that they had been advised that he took all his medications and was suicidal. When Mr. McIntosh got within 30 feet, approximately 10 to 15 yards, which is very close to police officers and refused to yield the commands, the officers could no longer wait for Mr. McIntosh, who was about to raise this handgun towards police. At that time, Officer Ravinsky fired two rounds one striking the subject and causing him to fall. Uh, it's a tragedy because uh, uh, this is not a situation that's often that we see where the police were dealing with a bad person or a criminal. Uh, it is, it, it's a tragedy uh, of a loss of life any time, but particularly when we're dealing with someone who was not a bad person, who was a good person grappling with issues for a long period of time resulting in this event uh, today. Scott's presence blessed our lives, and now I can't imagine how we will navigate life's milestones without him. Maybe his personality was too big for this world to contain. He fought hard to live a happy, giving life, despite being dealt an awful hand in life. He needed help. He needed compassion. He needed a reaction that was concerned with more than just satisfying protocol or with what would be considered justified action but with what would be the best way to approach a difficult situation to help a community member in crisis. We don't think that anyone involved in the events of December 9th intended to kill our brother and uncle, but Scott's death did not have to happen. It was absolutely avoidable given the information provided to both 911 dispatch and the law enforcement officers at the scene.